Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Happy, what's today? Wednesday? Thursday. Thursday. Thank you. Happy Thursday, everybody. So glad to see all of you. I know some of you are still being served, but we would like to uh, remain on our schedule and be timely so you can continue on your work day. Uh, welcome to the Women in, Bre in Business Breakfast presented by Ameriprise Financial. I hope everyone is enjoying their fantastic breakfast this morning. My name is Tanya Jackson. I am the board chair elect for the Douglas County Chamber and delighted to be your moderator for this morning. I would like to invite up Miss Patty Puckett with Ameriprise Financial to the stage for sponsor remarks. Thank you, Tanya. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you and good to be seen. Uh, this is actually my first event in public in the last year and a half, I guess. So it's great to be out and about again. And just want to say a couple of quick words about uh, me and my business. Um, I opened my branch in Douglasville in 1998 after joining Ameriprise in 1997. And the first two actions I took was to join the chamber and the second one was to find a community service project, which at that time I was working with Wellstar on the mall opening gala. So I go back to that little event and been here since. And um, I'm in the financial advisory, uh, financial planning, investment advice business. And I've been doing this now for 24 years and tend to keep doing it probably for another decade, uh, perhaps a little part time later on. But um, number of people have asked, in uh, the past five years, I did make a move to transition to joining a larger franchise out of Atlanta, who will continue uh, with the Douglasville office after I retire. So I've got a continuity plan, and it's provided a lot of resources for me and my clients to continue to grow the business. Uh, this past year and a half, I've worked 99% virtually, which has actually worked out quite well. Happy to say still grew the business by 10%. And the other good news is I'm wearing pants I haven't worn in a year and a half and they still fit. <laughs> so yay, that's a, that's a win for me, okay? <laughs> but uh, in your packets on the table, there is an offer of a complimentary consultation and that is open to anyone uh, in the room, anyone you'd like to refer for that. Uh, that's just a one hour phone conversation typically to talk about your financial situation and financial goals and to see if I'm a fit to perhaps help you reach that next level in your financial life. I help people primarily with retirement planning and investment management. So as you start, start thinking about retirement, uh, it's good to have that conversation. And if you're working with someone, get a second opinion. So my door is open. Our office is at the corner of Chapel Hill Road and Gulf Ridge Boulevard. We're in the first building on the right. I do still work virtually a couple of days a week and I go to my second half schedule in July. I usually work four days a week in the second half of the year, yay. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. But uh, enjoyed being in Douglas County since 1998 and being a part of the chamber since then. And for anyone in business, I always recommend the Chamber of Commerce membership. You get out of it what you put into it and getting to know people in the community. And, and I've been honored to be a part of the Wellstar Douglas Regional Board, the Rotary Club, United Way, and the Cultural Arts Council. So uh, very happy to be here today and happy to sponsor. Welcome to all of you and enjoy. Thank you. Thank you so much, Patty. We certainly appreciate your service to Douglas County and to the chamber. Now we'd like to recognize at this time a few folks that may be in the room. If we have any elected officials, if you would please stand to be recognized and introduce yourself. Don't think I see any. Next, uh, Cornerstone members, if you would please stand to be recognized. Go ahead. Excellent. Wes. And myself, Tanya Jackson with Ray Lynn. Uh, now our Chamber of Diplomats, the foundation and support, if you would please stand, introduce yourselves. Thank 
Excellent. Thank you so much. Now, if we have any new members who've recently joined our chamber, if you would please come to the podium and uh, give your 30 second elevator speech. Any new members in the house this morning? Come on down, the price is right. That's what I'm talking about, AAA. Good morning, everyone. Just want to say I'm delighted uh, to get here. Uh, we just opened our AAA office right here on Chapel Hill Road. Uh, of course, we do roadside service. Uh, and the big thing that we do a lot of people don't know about in Georgia is insurance. We do auto, home, life, and also uh, traveler's insurance. So if we can do anything for you, give us a call. Uh, we just got opened, um, ready to serve you, and happy to be here. Thank you so much. What are you located? The pub, in the public shopping center. Excellent. All right, great, thank you so much. All right, do we have any uh, guests who are thinking about contemplating to make the right decision to join the chamber? If you're here this morning, please stand up so that we can uh, convince you <laughs> to make the right decision. <laughs> what is your name, love? Okay, and your company? Okay, excellent. Well, I'll chat with you after the breakfast. And to, to all of you, thank you so much for joining us this, this morning for your support and you are greatly appreciated. This morning in our Women in Business Breakfast, we will hear from inspirational stories of two women who have powered through life's challenges. They've come out on top, both professionally and personally. I'd like to briefly introduce Ms. Margot Edwards. She's all about empowering people who in turn empower others. Margot has over 20 years experience in learning and development, business and financial management, is an accredited professor and CPA. She is the recipient of many awards, most recently the Georgia Outstanding Citizen Award. She is passionate about her current role as founder and CEO of JC Freedom House, Shelter for Women in Crisis, the positive impact it has had and on the thousands of lives it will change. She is a proud mother. She accredits her success to personal determination and her personal relationship with God. Please help me welcome Ms. Marigold Edwards to the stage. Our next woman of the morning, personal dear friend of mine, almost like another mother. Ms. Patty Wink is the co-owner of Wink Travel and Your Home Healthy Products with her husband, Stan. She is a strategic transformational leader, accomplished problem solver, travel planner, and an effective communicator. The pillars that serve as the foundation of Patty's business are integrity, evolution and execution. These same characteristics have helped her build a legacy of excellence and ignite change in her community. Patty serves on several boards and is the co-author of the book, Women Everywhere, Level Up and Lead. She has been featured in the Douglas County Sentinel, People You Need to Know, West Georgia Living, West Georgia Women, and other print and media publications. She resides in Douglasville with her husband, Stan. They are the proud parents of three, grandparents to 11, and great-grandparents to two. Please join me in welcoming Miss Patty Wink to the stage. So I hope everyone, if you'd like to go back and have seconds while we're gonna take probably about 25 minutes uh, to share, allow them to share their uh, story uh, from the helicopter view and hopefully their struggles, their triumphs from where they started and where they are now. We hope that we walk away with at least one point that they make that will make a difference in our lives that we can share with someone else. So now I'd like to welcome Ms. Marigold Edwards to the podium to present herself.
Thank you. I'm just going to briefly be sharing my story. My name is Marigold Edwards, and I am a survivor of domestic violence. Take your ass out of here, and when you come back, you'll find your things on the porch. That was what was said to me when my then husband was throwing me out of the house that I purchased. I thought to myself, how did I get here? How did I get into this situation? An international business consultant worked across four countries, worked with CEO, presidents, prime ministers, worked for Deloitte, worked for um, London Development Agency, University College London, Cat Gen and Gemini, you name it. How did I get into this situation? I remember the abuse. I remember two months coming to the country and being forced to stay, not being able to be going out of my house, not being able to use a vehicle, being embarrassed in public, being hit, being in, 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 in front of friends. And so I, I was just in shock at what had happened. And I remember um, after that little incident happened and he was throwing me out of my house, um, I remember running down the street. In fact, I was sort of walking quite fast. I wasn't running, but I was walking quite fast down the street. And I remember um, his car went by and I, I quickly got on the phone to make a phone call because um, I was planning to go uh, into the community and my phone wasn't working. And I realized that when I talked to the operator a few seconds earlier or minutes earlier, he'd cut off my line. I thought, why would you cut off my line? Do you think you own me? And I became very afraid because his, his behavior was so explosive. Anyway, I, I quickly called, I had that day before, I had um, contacted a domestic violence uh, um, shelter to do a support group because I realized I was in a domestic violence situation. I called them by some miracle, they had a space in their shelter. It, and it was a miracle, they were normally empty. Anyway, I, um, I called them because I was able to get the phone back online. I spoke at a whole new number, all by the side of the road, cowering, uh, just cowering by the side of the road actually, being bitten by mosquitoes because it was a hot day, but I was trying to get this phone back online. Anyway, called the police. They said, you'd have to call the police so that they can bring you to our shelter. They brought me to the shelter. And what I remember sitting in that police car, just bewildered and just stuck. I was in this cage thing. I wasn't used to that kind of thing. I'd never been in a police car and the, the, the cars in the UK, they weren't like that. And I was sitting there feeling like I was a criminal. Anyway, the good thing was they brought me to the shelter. And even though the regime was kind of tough there, it, rem it was reminiscent of a um, yeah, an open prison in the UK actually. Um, but I was safe. I had somewhere safe to stay. I had a bed to sleep on and I had food to eat. I was so grateful to them. After about four months there, um, I had to leave because it was an emergency shelter. And I looked all over Douglas County to see if I could find someone that was nowhere. And then there was this one transitional place I found. Uh, I went to interview there. Um, I, they said I could come and I went to live there. And I stayed there for, um, yeah, for about a year, two years. And while I was there, I was able to, um, finish my master's degree amazingly and uh, I was able to become a published author and you will see that book outside there um, the 12 success lessons it is um, I use it to fundraise for the shelter it's a motivational book and it's also a bestseller in fact Douglas County made it a bestseller because <laughs> you all bought it and so the shelter does very well. Um, some of our greatest accomplishments is the fact that we serve around 500 people a year through all our programs, our shelter, our crisis line, and the other programs that we run. And I'm most um, 
happy about the fact that 100% of the women completing our program have been reunited with their children, because often they, they come and they're not with their children. And so we're so happy about that. And we also have 100% record with employment. They've all got employment when they've come to our program. So I just uh, was just like to say thank you to God for what he's done, um, because he's done a lot. And I couldn't be here um, speaking to you without him. My name is Marigold Edwards, and I am a survivor of domestic violence. Thank you. I don't know how many times I've heard that story. <laughs> and just break down every time. <laughs> she's amazing. And the women that lives that she's changed um, and saved is phenomenal. What a blessing. Oh, and she sold all those books because she comes up and makes sure you buy one. <laughs> <coughs> so um, it, she'll be there on your way out. Uh, <laughs> just have $10 ready and she'll be willing, more than willing to take it in any form. <clears throat> um, my story is different um, in, obviously, we each have our own story. <clears throat> I have a question. How many of you have ever done one of those personality tests where you get to find out what your strengths are and so on? <clears throat> and I've done that several times. One of the times that I did that, um, it really hit me that your greatest strength is also your most challenging thing to overcome. It has both a positive and a negative. Mine happened to be in other categories would be a servant, um, taking care of others, um, that type of thing. So I walked into a situation with that type of who I am. <clears throat> I'd been friends with a couple for about four years and they decided to start a different type of holistic. And I, that's very much my background is holistic and knowing that the plan was amazing. What I didn't realize is that um, chances are I was asked to come in because their credit rating wasn't good and mine was. So when you see a, a, something that you feel is really awesome to bring to Douglas County, this was in 2007, you know, with me, it's just, well, yeah, let's just do whatever it takes to get it going. I knew nothing about business, absolutely nothing. <clears throat> I knew how to take care of sixth, seventh and eighth graders and that should have learned me, helped me learn a whole lot, but um, under the circumstances. But it was a trust factor. And everyone kept saying, Patty, you've got to have a contract. No, these are friends. These are people I've worked with for four years. There's no way that there's going to be anything happen. Well, it took me a little while to figure out Oh, yes, there was. There were things happening. And the shock of it, the, uh, the impact. <clears throat> and sometimes you can get into a situation where it just, it's like you're, you're that little animal on the wheel. And it's going and going. And it's like, how in the world do I get off? You know, that was my signature on the different amounts that I had put in, not because I had it, but theirs wasn't. Anyway, I try to be careful not to get into too much um, specifics. But the, the final result was that there was such a huge debt and realizing you know, and, and like Marigold said, education, background, when you get into something that's brand new, that you've never dealt with before, 
never had people turn on you and use you, it can actually just be so overwhelming and the own dev your own devastation of your own ignorance is overwhelming. To have to look in the mirror and say, how in the world could you have been that stupid? And then figuring out from there how to get out of it and what to do about it. I'm not going to go into some of the others because they've got some great questions they're going to ask us. <laughs> um, but that's just sort of an overview of making a decision that wasn't good, not listening to other people, and not trusting your gut. Because you know there were red flags all the way through that I excused because they were friends that I knew would never do anything to hurt me. Thank you so much, ladies. I think uh, most of us can uh, equate to uh, either one of those stories, if not personally, but someone in our family or a friend or someone in our circle of influence. So uh, we celebrate you this morning on, uh, that's the thing I found out about going through. It says going through, no matter what you go through, you have to keep moving to get through to the other side. And as we see this morning, the success that you have, the success that you have. So I think right there, that's a perfect example for us to no matter what your circumstances are, no matter what you face, no matter how you may feel alone, you know, COVID has uh, really stretched us mentally and presented a lot of challenges in our lives. But always know, no matter what, there is someone who has gone through what you have gone through and going through. And there is someone who has survived what you are going through or have gone through. Patty, I wanna to talk to you just and ask, how did you break down the goals or the steps to, to navigate and to overcome the financial hardship that you encountered because of the decisions? I turned it over to Stan. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, thank you so much for joining us for the breakfast this morning. I don't know what else we can say about that. Stan the man, that's what I call him anyway. <laughs> um, First, it was realizing what was happening and how what the small percent was that was coming to me to make payments. So here I'm investing, but I have to keep investing in order to be able to make the next payments. And it was just like, how do I get out of this? And that sense of, of stopping finally came to a head um, when there was quite a bit of income that had come in. I knew there had been and found out that my percent of what was given to me to pay the bills was, if I'm lucky, I don't think it was even 10%. <clears throat> so it was, sometimes we have something happen that it just hits you in the face and say, come on, You've got to start thinking, you've got to stop reacting, and you've got to start doing something about it. And it was at that point. We also were at a time, since this was in 2007, everything closed down in 2008. <clears throat> it was really, it was so difficult for the country because you know what we were going through in 2008. However, the financial crisis allowed us to be able to go and negotiate with the credit card companies. And I say us, I couldn't handle it. I was at a point where what it had done to me physically was um, unbelievable. And I still have different things that I've had to deal with because of that. And that's something else is, don't forget how much stress damages you, your body, mm -hmm. and, and the way you're thinking and what you're doing and how you're reacting. And when the bills would come in and I tried to figure out what to do with them, I got to where I just couldn't. And I was blessed to have the best support system that I could have had was with my husband. And this is honestly the truth. 
never once, never once did he say, I told you so. Mm. Never once. And to, to carry the guilt of knowing what I had done to us financially, sometimes it's still there. <clears throat> because we're at an age where there should be retirement. <laughs> um, there isn't. That's things we're working on. Uh, we're both in our 70s, and so that's just, um, I did other jobs. I worked other places. I got to teach at West Georgia Tech and did some other things. But Stan took literally every piece of that pressure off of me because he knew there was no way there was no way I could handle it. And what guilt can do if we don't, if we don't find that strength, we're easy, it's easier to forgive others. And the hardest thing is to forgive yourself oh, when you know you should have known. And we will have been, we'll be married 53 years in June. So excellent. We've been through a lot. We and now we've taken turns going through our own part. Okay, don't <laughs> don't 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 miss out on that part. Okay, <clears throat> this Sam's was like, mine. Okay. <laughs> We're not sharing his. Okay, got all right. <laughs> and I think the the two quick lessons I learned out of that, and I, I think we could all uh, pull from, is number one, <laughs> it is okay to ask for help, uh, and it's okay to trust someone else. I think, and I, I, and I know my, my uh, issue is asking for help because I think I can always do it all and figure it out as an only child. So thank you so much, Patty, for sharing that. Um, <clears throat> Marigold, and, and what I just said, asking for help, talk to us just briefly about your support system because you know, I know you went to the shelter, but beyond that, to get where you needed to be and back on your feet, who was besides God, you know, how did you develop that circle of support to help you move to the next level of success in your life? Um, people were so important. I couldn't have done it. It was community support that helped me to restart the shelter when it closed down because it was empty. It was just an empty house. It completely closed down. It was a lot of people in this room, actually, that supported and still support. Um, and it was, it's so easy to fail in business. And one of the things I discovered when I was first starting out with the shelter, I was told by people, oh, we've seen so many shelters come and go. This is what I was told. And I, I've seen quite a few come and go in the time that I have been running JC Freedom House. And what I came to discover is you're right about the, the support. Um, because people, I think it's what it is. Some people, people don't know their blind spots. You don't know your blind spots. And sometimes you can only learn something by doing it. You can only learn by doing it. And so because I would had a lot of experience in business before that, I did business support work. And, and so I maybe I didn't have as many blind spots. <laughs> That's what I would say about that. But I definitely had blind spots because it was new for me. But what, one of the things that I did was gain from somebody else's experience. So the first thing I did was work in that field. I volunteered um, to do group sessions at the local domestic violence shelter. So I was doing support group support work. Um, then afterwards, I went to work at the shelter as an advocate. And then I went to, I became a case manager. They promoted me to a case manager. All this time, I didn't even want to work there. I wanted to go back to being a professor. I had done some work for University of West Georgia. I had um, been working for um, the Cultural Arts Council. And then God said, no. This is what I want you to do. And so I just came completely off that work. So even when I was, I didn't want to take that particular job at the shelter. I knew I needed to take it, not realizing that I was going to be setting up a shelter. But that was the key. I was able to learn with peop from people of excellence, actually at Sheer House. Um, people of excellence that knew what they were doing and they did it well. And so because of that, I didn't have as many blind spots. But I think you've got to have that support, the people around you, and that example. Thank you so much, Marigold. And I think uh, you sharing uh, 
it's okay to admit what you don't know because number one, we don't know everything. We're not equipped or built to know everything and to recognize that uh, you need to partner. And also she didn't state it, but what I heard was is that she listened and she learned. And I think that's key in our relationships is listening because when you listen, you can hear, you can learn and you can move. So I'd like to uh, ask all of you if we would just give our two uh, uh, panel guests this morning, Ms. Patty and Ms. Marigold, uh, a round of applause on them overcoming life and then walking into grace. So lady, thank you so much. Uh, you may I have one, okay. one okay. thing I'd like to read. And this came across yesterday, perfect timing. Coincidence? Don't think so. Give, but don't allow yourself to be used. Love, but don't allow your heart to be abused. Trust, but don't be naive. Listen, but don't lose your own voice. Hmm. Very good. Thank you so much. And, and please come and see me after the day for a signed copy oh, of my God. book. Don't worry if you've already got one. You can give it to a friend. Take your $10, okay? Now we'd like to uh, express our appreciation again to Patty Puckett and Ameriprise for her continued support uh, for the Women in Business Breakfast as our naming sponsor. And so now I'd like to invite Patty up to help us draw for a door prize. <laughs> okay. Well, ladies and gents, this is a lovely wine tote and an electric wine bottle opener. So I have you ready for Memorial Day right here. <laughs> So let me do the honors here with Colby, who is the new jet of the chamber. All right, I'm not looking. Just say my name. It's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I thought for a second I had. Uh, I was like, Sarah? Yeah. Emily Hardaway. Oh, <laughs> So thank you all for being here today. Happy to be a sponsor and uh, have a wonderful weekend. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us for our Women in Breakfast uh, breakfast this month. Uh, we appreciate you joining us and thank you so much to Patty again and to Marigold and to Patty. And thank you to our president, Sarah Ray, and to the chamber staff. I hope y'all have an amazing day, a safe weekend, and just know that you're awesome and that you're loved. Thank you. Thank you.